Hi, Amy Harrop here, and today I want to talk a little bit about public domain content. Now, public domain content is content that is freely available and it's available for people to use for pretty much anything that they want to. There's no copyright and they can do whatever they want with it. And public domain content has been popular for a long time. And there are some misconceptions about public domain content. For example, did you know that public domain content is available with content that's been published all the way up through the 60s based on copyright laws? And there was a period of time where we did not have any new public domain content, at least in the United States. It was only a few years ago that a law was passed which meant that we could have brand new public domain content released each and every year. So right now we're up to content released all the way through 1928 and then as I mentioned there's another group of content that's available all the way up through the 60s if the copyright hasn't been renewed. And there's a lot of uh, like short stories and things that were published in magazines where their copyright hasn't been renewed. So content that is in the public domain hasn't been incredibly popular and there's a lot of different things that people do with it. But what I want to talk about today is how people are actually selling public domain content and not really doing too much extra to it or having to rework it all that much. And of course you can, that's certainly an option. And public domain covers everything. It covers things like paintings, movies, There's a, most movies now from the 1920s are in the public domain, uh, music. What I'm going to be talking about a little bit more today, though, are books, uh, particularly fiction and classics, what we like to call classics. These are books and content that people widely read today, or perhaps they read books that are similar to these types of books and they just haven't found them yet. And that's another thing is, let me go over here and show you, but you can see here that Americans and people around the world love to read what's called genre fiction. They love to read things like mystery, thriller, crime. There are also popular things like romance novels, fantasy. So the people who are fans of these types of books often are looking for more books in these genres as well. Now, if you're a content creator or a person who wants to leverage content to make more money online, then getting involved with public domain content it can be extremely profitable. So just what I want to show you here is this is, this is a list of Amazon's bestsellers in their classic section here and these are books that are very popular and a lot of these books are in public domain. Not all of them, at least for right now, but a lot of them are. So we have our two here, our, our here and then we come down here. So this book here, number eight, The Great Gatsby is in public domain. And uh, that's extremely popular. And then we come here. This is uh, Marcus Aurelius' Meditations. This is ancient uh, from ancient Rome, Italy. This is also now in public domain. Brave New Worlds also in public domain. Macbeth is in public domain. This may be in public domain or be close to it. Their Eyes Are Watching God. The Odyssey is in public domain. This particular book is not in public domain, but there are now a number of books from Agatha Christie that are in public domain. Both of these are in public domain. Pride and Prejudice is in public domain. Frankenstein is in public domain. And so on and so forth. There's another Frankenstein, so that's very popular. Crime and Punishment, Count of Monte Cristo. These are all in public domain. So you can see that public domain content sells very, very well still here today. And it's not even just content like that. If you go over here to results from best selling as well, this is another thing where it's sorted, you can see we have these what are called the variations, which are often variations of um, Jane Austen novels are also very popular. Uh, Post-war westerns, which are a sort of uh, type of western book. These used to be very popular in the 30s and 40s and people are rewriting them now. Here we have uh, Inspired by Pride and Prejudice. So there's Frankenstein again, a Pride and Prejudice variation. So Pride and Prejudice variations are actually just like a whole little subculture where people love to read those. This, this is, I mentioned a minute ago, the Agatha Christie books are in the public domain. Some of them are in our stories, and this is one that's a collection that is in the public domain. 
So there's a lot of types of stuff here that's in the public domain. This is These are all in the public domain, mixed in with more current work. So there's a really great opportunity for people who want to publish this. So you might be thinking, well, if it's already published on Amazon, what can I do? Amazon does require that you actually put in new content if you're publishing something that's already on there. So if you do want to publish something that's already on there, you have a couple of options. You can repackage um, it so it's with different types of content. Uh, you can illustrate it, you can translate it, or you can annotate it. And I have actually developed a tool that allows you to quickly and easily add annotation types of content. Now annotation is a bit of a misleading word, I think, because it makes it sound like it's footnotes and endnotes, but annotation really just refers to supplemental material, things like study guide questions, author biographies, and so forth. So if you want to publish public domain content on Amazon, Adding this type of supplementary content is good for a couple of reasons. First, if you're publishing a title that's already on there, that's going to allow you to publish it. Amazon's going to allow you to do that because you have the extra content, but also because you are giving additional helpful content to the reader. A lot of the readers who want to read these are looking for these. They might be interested in that genre, but perhaps they don't know much about the author or the time period. So your type of content that you put together when you package this, whether you're packaging perhaps a bunch of short stories around a specific topic, or perhaps you're also publishing maybe a collection of books by an author or some more obscure works by a popular author, that type of supplemental content is going to help your book stand out from the competition. So as I mentioned here, I have put together a, and this is uh, the page here where you can go to, I have put together this tool that will create all of this for you in mere moments. And I also show you how you can find public domain content, use this tool that's included with this, and create all that content in mere moments, and then easily put it together with the public domain content format it, upload it, and publish it all out of the same software with this step three here. So this is really a, um, I don't want to call it a secret, but it's, it's a way to quickly and easily take advantage of the fact that public domain content still sells and is popular, but there's a lot of people out there who aren't taking advantage of that. And as a content publisher and creator, you could get involved with this very quickly and easily. So go ahead and check out the link below so you can see more about how this does and hopefully I'll see your public